This is Devil's Den. It's a series of caves and channels that was only revealed after a sinkhole collapsed to make this opening. But the question is, how did all this happen? How did all this solid limestone get so full of holes in water? Well, here's a hint. It's all formed by a process called dissolving. So let's go diving and find out more. Limestone caves like this are formed as the rock, or solute, is dissolved by a solvent, creating a solution. So let's review here. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances, a solute dissolved in a solvent. Now rainwater picks up carbon dioxide as it falls through the atmosphere and as it seeps through the earth. This forms a weak solution of carbonic acid or carbonated water. Carbonic acid is a solvent for limestone, when it comes in contact with limestone, it dissolves its main mineral component, calcium carbonate. Carbonic acid seeps into every split, fissure joint, and fault, making the cavities larger and larger as the calcium carbonate dissolves. Now, although the process is slow, it still forms some of the largest and deepest caves and channels in the world, including the Devil's Den sinkhole. Well, sinkholes occur when parts of Earth's surface collapse or sink into those cavities. In this type of sinkhole, where there's a lot of water passing through a limited space, the land collapses into those cavities and is washed away. So, even a weak solution, given enough time, can make a big impact. And did you know we encounter a wide variety of solutions every day? So it's easy to think of a solution as a solid solute being dissolved in a solvent. Kind of like this drink powder is being dissolved in water to make a fruit drink. What you might not think of, however, is how a gas can also be dissolved in a solution. Just like rainwater collects carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid, soda bottlers put carbon dioxide in their drinks to make them fizzy, a process we call carbonation. Now, it takes a lot of pressure to get carbon dioxide into solution. But just to show you that this gas is in solution, let's do something really fun to get it out of solution. Whoa, Haley! <laughs> okay, so here I have mint candy and diet soda, and we're gonna get the carbonation out of solution with some force. Now, I'm sure you know what's gonna happen, but before I drop this in, let's take a look at this reaction. When water is carbonated to make bubbly soda, water molecules cling tightly around each carbon dioxide molecule, keeping it from forming a gas bubble until you open the bottle. Water really clings tightly to itself. It takes extra energy to get them to push away from each other and allow gas bubbles to form. When you drop mint into diet soda, the gelatin and gum arabic in the candy help break the tight mesh of water molecules, allowing the carbon dioxide bubbles to form. The bubbles form almost instantly in the tiny pits all over the candy as it drops to the bottom of the bottle. And with all that carbon dioxide gas expanding at the same time, you get a powerful push that rockets the liquid up and out in a spectacular way. All right, it's time for me to escape like carbonation from a solution. Until next time, never stop exploring your world. Whoa. All right, now it's your chance to try this experiment at home. See what you find and write it down in your notebook. And as with any experiment, be sure to get your parents or teacher's permission before doing it. And only conduct experiments while a teacher or parent supervises. And as always, never stop exploring your world. Come on!